The governor does not support law enforcement, and he didn't for his 16 years as attorney general either. Thank you, Mr. Forrest. Next question has to do with Medicaid and teacher pay. As we have seen in the last uh, few years, the Republican legislature, the Democrat governor, are in a long-running battle over this. But what it's resulting in, of course, is teachers not getting pay raises. And on the other side, the Medicaid not being expanded to people who would otherwise qualify it for it in the state. Uh, is there a way we can do that? What do we have to do to serve both groups of these people? All we, do, and all we need is a new governor. I, won't, I will work with the General Assembly. I won't work against them. In fact, we've given teacher pay raises every single year until Governor Cooper became governor and started vetoing every single pay raise. We were able to pass some in, in some secondary budgets, but he keeps vetoing. He keeps claiming, I want more teacher pay. And then he says, zero is better than something. No, it's not, Governor. Zero is not better than something. We've given teachers 20% pay increases. That's not nothing. Every single year we've increased teacher pay, we'll keep doing it. We've said we would keep doing it. So uh, we're going to keep working on that. But as long as the governor keeps vetoing budgets, we're not. When I'm governor, I'm not going to veto the budgets. I'm going to work with the General Assembly. We're going to come up with a plan, not just for education and teachers that keeps funding those things, but for these other things that we need to do as well. We've been doing that. And the governor has been an obstructionist ever since he's been in office. He's never worked with the General Assembly. He's never tried to work with the General Assembly. When I'm governor, I will. Mr. Cooper. Working with the General Assembly on a lot of things, I'm just not going to rubber stamp everything they do like you're doing, but health care is one of the most important issues we face right now in closing the health care coverage gap, particularly in the middle of a pandemic, I believe is a moral imperative. We have a way to get health care to construction workers, to early childhood educators by expanding Medicaid. Thirty-nine other states have done it, including Indiana, when Mike Pence was governor. I was talking to an early childhood teacher who was mourning the death of a coworker who had died of a stroke. She was treating herself at home with home remedies for high blood pressure because she didn't have health insurance. If North Carolina had expanded Medicaid, she might be alive today. This is wrong to withhold coverage from over half a million working North Carolinians. All we have to do is to say yes. And Dan Forrest and the Republican leadership continue to stop it. And if he's elected governor, you know it's not going to happen. 30 seconds, Mr. Forrest. A million and a half uh, working North Carolinians. They were working until you laid them off, Governor. Now there's uh, 1.8 million without jobs. Give them their jobs back. They can get their health care back. Yes, everybody needs health care. We know that. You cannot survive in this world today without health care coverage. We need to continue to drive down costs and we need to drive up quality. Uh, Medicaid is not the way to do that. A one-size-fits-all government program is not the way to do that. The governor wants more money to expand the largest agency in the state when he can't can't manage the DOT, he can't manage hurricanes, he can't manage deaths in nursing homes. You want to give him money to increase the largest agency in the state of North Carolina? Not good business. Mr. Cooper. Look, we can expand Medicaid in North Carolina and it won't cost the state any additional money. It's time to do it now. The people of this state deserve to get health care coverage. Dan talks about getting a job as a magical thing that's going to get you health care. There are tens, hundreds of thousands of people in this state who have jobs but don't have employer-sponsored health insurance and can't afford it. They're working. They want to keep working to support their family. We could expand Medicaid to get those working people health insurance. You have no plan, Dan. No plan at all. Gentlemen, we have uh, time for one more question and uh, rebuttals tonight. And I do want to talk about her.